Well, it's a bit of a crazy day today uh, here at um, Aussie Radio Pickers. We're finally getting into some radios that have been sitting around for a long time, a few weeks. <laughs> Came from Adelaide. Um, so what's that? Yeah, a few weeks ago. Uh, finally got the... Um, the bubble wrap off them and thought, oh, I remember these. Okay, so what do we got? Um, FT767, Yaesu uh, 767GX, of course. Uh, one of the nice things about these is, uh, well, this one particularly, and we're seeing double today, of course. Um, <laughs> it really is, you know, sort of an eyesight problem, but, uh, yep, uh, there's, there's two. Anyway, all good. There will be one, though. Uh, so we'll get to that. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm just putting a signal through at the moment on um, 7155, uh, just listening to uh, a bit of stuff coming out of the generator, which is driving you mental, so I'll turn that down a bit. Um, and uh, uh, they have separate outputs on these, so, so get used to the idea of separate antennas for every band uh, or, you know, running on the VHF, UHF bands to run uh, duplexes, triplexes, etc., to uh, be able to get yourself, um, uh, you know, at least... Uh, on 6, 2 and 70. 6, 2 and 70 you can do with one antenna. Uh, there's a vertical out that will do that, no problems. Um, uh, Comet put one out um, uh, that was the... Uh, oh, geez, going back in my memory now. Uh, I'll come back to the model number. But um, uh, definitely, it had a... Um, it was like an X200, but it actually had a 6 metre element coming off the side of it as well uh, that uh, resonated as um, uh, X something. Oh, geez. Anyway, um, we'll get there. Uh, and I always confuse diamond and um, common antennas. They're all the same. I'm sure they come out of the same factory. Uh, but <laughs> did not say that too loud. Uh, anyway, okay, so what do we got? We've got a radio that, you know, could, you could spend hours on because that's, um, that's the thing. They have a lot of different aspects to them. So uh, let's just go down and start from the start. So basically um, 160 metres, 80 metres, 40 metres, 30 metres, 20 metres, 17, 15... 12, 28. Okay, where it gets interesting is from there it goes to 6 metres, 2 metres and 70 centimetres. Now, uh, once again, on separate antennas, so that gives you quite a bit of versatility. So, um, you'll be actually watching this being tested as I'm testing it because... Um, uh, <laughs> lately I've been doing that and it's been surprising. Some videos, people go, why would you do that? Because you just showed us a fault. Well, yeah, you've got to fix, fix the faults anyway, so I might as well show you when, when they occur. You can see them live with me. And it saves me doing it twice, to be honest, so there you go. Okay, so we want to have a look at does this thing receive and transmit? And we've pretty much agreed straight away that it's down to 0.2 of a microvolt there. So we... Jeez, I can still hear it 0.1. Still hear it just at 0.05. So, so, yeah, okay, it receives beautifully. All right, so, one, two, one, two, one, two. Hello. Let's have a look. We're on the... 100 watt scale. Jeez, these radios are taking up some room. Oh, no. Oh, I can't whistle. That's right, the new term is audio. Yeah, that doesn't work. That doesn't peak as well. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it's getting its 100 watts, which is what you'd expect out of one of these. Um, and um, basically, we just do a quick check and we're sort of going, hello, test one, two. Yep. Um, and it's just seeing on each band, I won't take you through that, um, but I'll just go to the uh, top band of HF at least. Um, and go hello one two hello one two now it's interesting we're getting really good meter movement over here <whistles> if i could whistle hello getting 100 watts there and we're getting absolutely no meter movement off there which normally is an alc issue that um uh <laughs> yeah because i'm on alc which will happen now actually just to show you what what that is um let's bring that and that about there let's just see if we can trick this thing one two I bet you on power, it will actually do one, two, hello, one, two, one, two, hello, yeah. Okay, now, seen a few Yasus do this, to be honest, and um, I won't try and kid you. Uh, normally, it's a matter of uh, tricking it a little bit. Hello, one, two, there's eh, still no ALC there. Um, that's um, one we'll put on the list of let's have a little look at and see why. Uh, where we were getting back down here... Uh, on, oops, sorry, uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so we're getting good ALC there. One, two, three, four, five, test one, two. So let's have a look. Let's go one band at a time. Let's see where we want to know where do we lose it. One, two, three. It'll, it'll be as we're going up on the bands, and somewhere it'll decide one, two, three, one, two. It'll decide that it doesn't want to read ALC. 
And one, two, three, four, five. Uh, starting to lose ALC there a little bit as far as its meter reading. I reckon it'll lose it about now. Oh, yeah, still not great though. Still pushing 100 watts though as I go through. Uh, sorry, let's go 24 there. Harlow, oh, Harlow, oh, one, two, one, two. Oh, it's still, yeah, yeah. So what's happening on 10? One, two, hello, one, two, one, two. Harlow, oh, draws current, does everything that it should do. Um, Oh, hang on, where do I go? When it's six metres in, that's not going to help us very much, is it? Um, <laughs> especially with nothing on there, so I won't transmit there just yet. So, little issue to have a look at and say, okay, why are we getting no ALC reading on 10 metres? Pretty minor for one of these things, I can tell you. Um, they're a fairly complex radio. Okay, so then we're just really going back to 40 metres, and we are checking things like putting a bit of signal back in. Uh, generate would help. Just a little bit of signal. I want to see if the RF amp works. RF amp works. Does it have a narrow filter? No, it doesn't. Tone encoder won't work from there. TX shift is really when you push that in and move this one here. So um, very much like uh, uh, XIT type of uh, thinking. Uh, processor we just had in before, and that was working quite well. Uh, CW Vox. Hello, 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 hello. There you go. Vox works. That's good. All right. So. What we've got basically is something that on HF, for all intents and purposes, um, you know, looks like it's working well. A uh, little bit concerned about the fact that the ALC meter is not 100% uh, on um, 10 meters, but I think I know exactly what that'll be, so that may not be a hard one. Uh, actually, quite, quite an easy one. Uh, what else? You've got quite a lot of functionality here, which um, we call this the read the menu, uh, sorry, read the book and, and learn the menus, learn everything that's on there. Um, and. Um, but there's, there's certainly a lot of um, keypad stuff that this does. Um, oh, there's a good point. Tuna, forgot about that. Oh, wait, it says wait. I didn't listen to it. it, it, it you can see there, it says wait. What do I do? Don't wait. I've no idea if these... There might even be an external tuner that they use, um, and it's waiting to see the tuner. I've got a feeling that's exactly what it is, because I don't think they had an internal tuner. <laughs> the more I'm thinking about it, I don't think they had an internal tuner. Um, all right, I'll double check that as well. So, uh, as I said, you're learning as I'm learning. Uh, so, what else have we got here? Um, back on about a little bit of noise. IF shift. Tone control there. Uh, whoops, sorry, down a bit. And IF shift. Now, the notch should have a switch somewhere for that. Which I won't bother trying to find that while I'm on. We'll be here for another. Oh, here we go. Notches here. Fair enough. So we can actually notch out and pass band filters there. Yeah, okay. So pretty well featured, actually. Um, sorry, that would work better if I turn the uh, APF on there for the pass band. Okay. And I'll knock that off there. Noise blanker works. Mute works. Digital lock works. Okay, good. All right. So for all intents and purposes, all mode. Uh, FSK, AM, CW, FM, etc. Uh, just want to check we've got some power on FM. Oh, yeah, we've got 100 watts. Of... Now, there's a good way to see power, by the way. If you're not good at whistling and going audio and harlow, well, sometimes just hit the FM and there's 100 watts of FM power there. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, that's quite good. Um, that, the RF stage on this is obviously uh, doing very well. Okay, so the other facets of this radio, let's go to. So we've gone all the way up to 51 megs, 51155. Uh, actually, you know what, uh, can that go? Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, I should have hit the one meg split. But what, I, what I'm trying to attempt to do is get a little bit closer to 50.110 here, because the truth is, we, most of us don't really care um, about what's happening on 51.155. We wanna know what's happening on 110. And put that back there. But that's what we want to know. And we've got our generator on 50.110, and uh, yeah, that's, that's working nicely. Let's see what it receives down to. Oh, ho, ho. okay, this, this is a super hot six meter radio. Um, now the big question is, because I can't remember for the life of me, we just turn generator off. Um, how much power do they put out here? Um, let's go to FM, because we learnt that FM saves are saying high-low test and all those sort of things. Uh, hang about, oh, I'm doing something silly here, give me a sec. And very quickly we pick up that we've got a, um, a TX uh, fault uh, on six metres, because I cheated and had a bit of a, a quick look around. And what I'm checking for here 
tricks for new players is does it actually transmit anywhere on six? So let's go up, be lazy. Do we get a spot anywhere where it's come suddenly cuts in like the VCO cuts back in? Although it's not a VCO fault because we were clearly receiving quite well before. So it will be a transmit output um, uh, issue on six metres. But still good to know because you learn as you go along. All right, uh, we'll come back to the six metre fault. Now, I've, I've ducked over to two metres um, because I kind of have an idea how to fix the six metre fault if I really, really needed to. We, we may not. We may choose to just sell it with the six metre fault in it. But um, I, I kind of got a little suspicion I might know what that is. So I'll come back to you on that um, and I'll tell you what my findings are probably in the comments uh, uh, section of this video. Okay, so um, I know for a fact 2 and 70 work because I quickly blipped them. <laughs> I cheated. Uh, but um, receiver, fantastic on, um, on um, 145 megs. Look at this. I'm down to point, 0.05 here. And I'm still... Look at this. Unreal. Lightning hot receiver um, on there. And we'll just turn our squelch up a little bit. Uh, just incredible. And um, uh, as I said before, I, I got a chance to cheat before, so uh, I can just go to FM, bring the volume up, uh, turn that little fella off. One, two. Uh, volume up, I said. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And that's um, not bad at all. Let's have a look at um, deviation on this. One, two, one, two, one, two, five kilohertz deviation. So we're happy with five kilohertz, so that's great. Uh, we're happy with the power output, which is even better. And um, yeah, look, 10 watts of um, power. So what happens there um, is basically you're um, ready to put this uh, these modules straight into an amplifier. The idea being 10 watts in, 160 out, that type of stuff. Um, well, there's bigger amps out there now that 10 watts in causes a lot of, <laughs> a lot of power. But... Um, yeah, look, working well there. Let's just have a look at sideband just for the heck of it. One, two, three, four, five, one, two. Oh, yeah, 10 watt sideband, no problem. So, look, happy with that too. So, two meters looking very, very good, which is great. I just quickly tested, I misspoke before, sorry, 20 watt. You'll get about 20 watts out of each of these modules, uh, not 10. Uh, so, you may find for some amps that require 10 watts, you know, you're sort of cutting that power level back a bit. I just saw an interesting feature as I fumbled through this radio. Um, uh, it's basically, I mean, there you go. So that's saying 12 watts there of FM power. Uh, does it do sideband? Now, my meter's telling me a little different to that, to be honest. Um, uh, hello, 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 hello. Well, this, yeah, my meter might be reading a bit higher. I'm just going to put mine over to a 10 watt scale and go back to FM again and compare that because on the 100 watt scale, it's showing me yeah, see, that's, that's definitely going over the 10, but, you know, maybe that's saying 12. My my meter, as you can see, is going bang over the side um, and suggesting, oh, no, 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 no. Look at the right scale, idiot. Sorry, my fault. Uh, 12 watts. Yeah, no, actually, that agrees. So, right, let's misspeak again. 12 watts. <laughs> so let's call them 10 watt modules, um, and that will be exactly what they are. And sorry, I was reading the wrong scale then. I've just uh, been doing this too much today. Uh, digital SWR as well, 1.4 off the dummy load, which, you know, <laughs> bloody good dummy load in the uh, uh, in the IFRs, aren't they? Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, they do have a digital feature like that, which you can switch between and, and actually have a look and go right Um Okay, so what we'd like to do is to actually see if the receiver works well on UHF. Let's just bring some tone in there. Let's get rid of this um, metering that we're doing. Oh, come back, that's it. Okay, so at the moment we're, we're putting oodles of signal in. Now, I'm just going to bring the squelch off. Oh, look at that. I'm at 0.05 of a microvolt. At that scale, I can read, thank God. Jeez. Um, They've got a lot of receive power, these things. All right. Okay. Basically, that, without getting into a 25-minute video is a very quick look at what an FT767GX does. Um, I really like a couple of features of it. Sorry, I just keep repositioning here and um, the silly camera thing's a bit of fun. Let me show you something. 
So we're back on um, HF, so I've had to just obviously flick a couple of cables around and um, run it back onto the analyzer, blah, blah, blah. Um, have a look at this. I like this feature. I don't know if you do, but I do. Um, so we're on 7.158. We lose visibility of it, but hollow, harlow, harlow. harlow. And we can just get a, a peak reading, Harlow, one, two, one, two. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, these things percolate okay, one, two. Harlow test, one, two, three, four, five. Testing, one, two, three, four, 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 five. <laughs> like that feature is a nice feature just to hit the button and say, ah, sorry, I don't need your external power meter. I'm all there. I've got it. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, so do I like this? Uh, this is the first time... I've actually had a chance to play with one. I do. And we'll obviously keep one of the two. That's sort of how it works here. Um, anybody who doesn't know how it works um, is that we are trying to build a bit of a display, sure. Uh, it's pretty unprofessional versus professional because it's on limited budgets, of course, and we're just doing our best. Um, but when we sort of buy something, uh, if we get more than one, Yes, we do sell off the other one and get rid of it. Um, and uh, we're just looking for one good working example of, of most things. So um, both of these are actually pretty similar. There's not too many differences. Um, so this one will come up um, for sale, the top one here, mainly because I've already tested it. And um, um, we'll have a look at that six metre issue just as whether or not that's um, something we want to do or leave. You know, we'll just discount the thing and sell it. But uh, anyway, all good. That's the FT767GX. Um, am I impressed? Yeah. Yeah, I am. I, actually, yes. I didn't think I was going to be, but I am. Uh, I think the versatility of bands and, um, I mean, this is a TS2000 with quality, you know. So it's, um, I mean, I can only go by the, I mean, I love the receiver specs. I think the receiver specs are fantastic anyway. So that'll be the FT767GX uh, for now. And uh, look out for it on your Facebook page or on the Aussie Pickers uh, Facebook page or anything uh, that we advertise when we get rid of bits. Uh, but uh, one of these will be going, so uh, certainly we'll, um, we'll make that known. Uh, also keep an eye on vkclassifieds.net.au with uh, Alan Meredith, um, big supporter of Alan's, great, uh, great guy. So um, certainly um, keep an eye out there too. All right, 73s from Aussie Radio Pickers. This is VK3 Charlie Mike. Uh, Brenton, all the best to you. And uh, until we do another one, cheers all.